Hey everybody, this is Damon, aka Willie Rip, over at Black Warrior Lures, and I wanted to show you how I use these Dodger discs in making my various flies and lures and whatnot. Now, what is the Dodger disc, first of all? I mean, if you've seen my other channel, my Greenhorn Gardening channel, uh, I've talked a little bit about how I make these flies, these trolling flies. They're more than just trolling flies. They, they, they really can be fished by casting. You can do all kinds of things with them. The whole point is that instead of just having a fly like this one, this is just static. This is a bait fish pattern. Um, it, if, if you just cast it out in the water or you just troll it behind the boat, it's just going to move straight unless you impart some sort of action to it. What this does, and this is sort of a woolly bugger, you know, the disc makes it wiggle and, and dodge about and dodge and dart about. Therefore, the dodger disc. Now, so why is that important? Well, because if you, in, unless you impart action to the fly or to the lure, you're not gonna catch no fish. You want to catch fish? You got to put action on the fly. Now you can do that through just trying to do all kinds of crazy things. But when I'm trolling and I got rods behind the boat, I, I don't have time to be manipulating the line and all this crazy stripping techniques. I need to, the fly to do all the work all on its own. And uh, same thing when I'm uh, casting and stuff like with even with spinning and bait casting gear and not with fly fishing gear and so what I do is I came up with these d discs that are made from polymer clay and I'll maybe do a a second video on do, maybe do a turn this into a series and talk more about the the polymer clays and what you need to do to make these uh, work with your hooks and whatnot but uh, the, the, the reason that's why it works it gives erratic action to the lure and that attracts fish and fish they hit it okay and that, that's how that works and there are other products like this on the marketplace but these you can make these yourself or you can buy them for me already made either way uh, you know I just one day I just got tired of buying all this stuff and decided I'm gonna come up with something on my own and this is what I came up with now uh, so how does it work? How do you get it onto the hook? Now, now I found that what works best with these are just good old school Mustad 3366 hooks. You can use a 3399, something like that, but just a basic plain Jane hook works fine. Uh, I've never tried them with a circle hook, as you see that this, this is, but you know, for trolling, circle hooks are not really the best thing. Uh, a kale hook uh, might work well. You can have a straight eye or a downturned eye hook, doesn't really matter, but just a plain Jane hook. Now these come in three sizes that I make. Uh, these are uh, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch. Half inch, I would use usually about on a number four hook. The three from uh, about a number one hook up down to about a number about a number uh, four hook you could probably put a number in a pinch you could probably put a number six on there but I usually wouldn't go much more than a number four the thing I like about the sprout hooks is that uh, the, the shank is long enough to make it work but usually when I tie these I always tie a second stinger hook on them so I don't have to have as big a hook because of the gap, because you're wondering, well, you know, would that interfere with it? Not necessarily, because when I'm trolling, you need a stinger hook anyway, and the stinger hook gets them every time. And uh, I may have to do another video show you how I tie those flies in. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me get back to the point. How do you mount these things on the dang um hook? A couple of different, well, it's only one way. Super glue. Any brand doesn't matter. I buy the Gorilla Glue brand because it's available locally and it's you, you get a good bit in the bottle. I like this feature here. It has this metal tip on there. You probably can't see it, but uh, it works well. CA glue and 50-pound test monofilament, or or for the for the stinger, 50-pound test monofilament and thread. With this, you don't have to prepare the hook in any way. This is a number four Mustad 3366 hook. Now, technically, this is a 3366BR because they just recently Mustad's gone through a way of uh, uh, renaming and their hooks and all that, but uh, but uh, you just take it and thread it here and push it in. It's a little hole, and then that's it. 
it just goes on very easily. All right, and that's a number four. Let's get a the bigger hook here. This is a number one Mustad uh, 3366. Again, the small size, I'd go down to about a number four. You might get a number six to work, although I haven't tried it, but I think it could work if you, you just have to kind of wiggle it in a little. Uh, this is a number one hook. And I'd use this all the way up to about a number one alt. So, so well, number two, perhaps a number one hook, you know, number two, number one, number one alt. That's what I'd use with, the, uh, with this particular size. And again, it just goes straight on there. And just punch it through. It just fits right on. And just tie your fly like normal. Or if you're going to do, you can put a tandem hook on there. You can do jointed you know you know a lot of people do the jointed types of flies where you got the body here and you got a tail on this tied on this thing all that works you tie it just to whatever your favorite streamer pattern on it the only thing you're doing is adding a device here that adds movement now oh sorry there's like a it's like a stone there's a stone flying in my stinking window man he's just buzzing about this is just annoying um I didn't kill him because he's a stone fly, right? I might can catch him and go fishing with him, but <laughs> all right. So now this is a two alt hook here, and that's got the three quarter inch size, and that works well. But let me show you. You can also put it'll fit here. As you can see, the one inch size fits well on a two alt or larger hook. And so uh, you know, so the so the size of the disc, you know, fits with the size of the of the lure, uh, with with the scales with the size of the hook. And so with the large size, I'd go with two alt or larger. Now I can show you, you can try to do it with a number one alt hook, or a number one hook rather. Uh, it doesn't quite fit. You know, it's just, it's, you know, we could probably force it if you could drill it out, but, you know, it's, you know, you know, and there you go there. Now that's, that's a, now you got it on there. Now that's a number one hook. Now that's a big stinking thing but again the, the lip here well over overrides the uh, hook there uh, generally I don't worry about that sort of thing because I can always put a stinger on it like this one now what do you do to uh, secure it on there you don't have to lay down any base thread or anything all you have to do I'd usually do this on the fly tying vise but I don't have it uh, set up here take your CA glue one drop and that even, even that's too much you may not be able to see that on camera so well and I just sort of spin it on there and it gets it in there and uh, generally we'll put them on there then go ahead and tie the uh, the, the fly uh, but once it's on there I'll just sit there and let it dry like that and there we go it's on there and then you'll be wrapping thread around it as well and, uh, and there you go And uh, for a stinger here this is a number four I'll use like a number eight stinger okay every other stinger I use is I'll just use a number four hook even if I'm using a two alt stinger I'll use a number four if I'm using a two alt hook like this one I'll put a number four stinger on it um, even if I'm using a number one hook like this one, I'll put a four out. I'll put a number. I'll, yeah, these numbers get confusing because of the way the scale works. Even if I'm using a number one mustad hook here, I'll use a number four stinger. But once I get down to the number four stinger, guess what? I'm just going to go ahead and use the. Um, I will go ahead and use the a number eight hook on that. Uh, make it a little bit smaller. And for painting these, you can spray paint these. Uh, I've been experimenting with some airbrushing. I'm learning how to do it, but uh, uh, I had painted these first and then trying to put them on the hook. I think the better way is going to be put them on the hook and then just spray paint the whole thing while it's on the hook and have after the glue is dried and all that. But uh, but uh, but that's a brief sort of overview as to you know so so what why does it why does it matter and you know there's just something about making your own lures. And even if you don't make them, you know, lures that were made that were customized, I think helps the local economy instead of just, you know, not just the local economy, but here stateside, instead of just buying something that's just mass produced. Uh, this is, for instance, this lure here is designed after the red swamp crawfish. Uh, and 
uh, which is used in the um, you know we the Sipsi Swamp just outside of Tuscaloosa. This is a crawfish pattern here. It's got the red dots on it, little red paint, um, and and you know there's just something about either making your own or buying something that's custom made, designed by a, a, a custom uh, a maker, and so that you just don't get with the mass produced. The mass produced just assumes that everybody's going to be doing the same thing, using the same thing for the same reasons, and that's just not necessarily true. Now this particular one here, I did something different. I added some weight to it, actually this one. You can see here, I added some, uh, I drilled out a hole, added a, uh, basically what is a sort of a bead that you can get in a crafting store, and, and I wrapped this whole thing with some uh, lead core line. So to add weight to it. Now these things do have weight. They do add weight to the lure, and they will it will help get down. But if you want more weight, just again, uh, I would drill out the hole, and then just add your lead core line or your copper line, whatever your state regs uh, allow, and then just slide that over it just like normal. Now, what this is designed to do is to give the action and whatnot. And so uh, this, and so it does add a little weight. It's very lightweight. Uh, I have cast them with a fly rod. I mean, it's a cr it's kind of crazy, actually, all that wind. But with most bass plugs or bass fly lines, uh, saltwater fly lines, you, it won't have a problem because those sorts of things are really windy and catch a lot of wind anyway. So this is um, and uh, so it casts fine, just fine. And so that's kind of a brief introduction to these Dodger flies how to get on let me show you once again on this one how to you know yeah you saw me mount it on the hook and then uh, a drop just one drop of CA glue super glue whatever brand you like best is you know it's all the s same thing it's <laughs> and I you know, just kind of twist it all the way up to the front there just to kind of get it down in there and then if you've got a rack the best thing to do is just kind of let it hang there and dry if not just set it there like that it'll be fine and just let it dry and once it dries you can paint it uh, and tie your lures up with it it's best to do these things you know you know do them a couple dozen at a time or something you know that way you get it done you can just sit down and, and tie you know just consider it a part of your hook preparation you know if you're sharpening your hooks and all that anyway you know just hey put the dodger on there super glue them up and it's just a part of your hook preparation. So we'll do this big one here as well. Probably tie a Mickey Finn with this one. Or what I like to call the bass crack, <laughs> which is, makes a lot more sense in today's world than Mickey Finn. But anyway, so there you, so there you go. You know, um, that's the uh, Dodger disc by Black Warrior Lures. Check out Black Warrior Lures. You can either uh, .com or you can go over to the Etsy page and check out the uh, various lures bobbers and uh, driftwood art that I have for sale. I'll check you guys later.